Hi folks, welcome to the fifth tutorial lecture and uh, uh, the last lecture in our series, lecture number 43. And uh, we will be uh, talking uh, about some problems uh, on measurement of high voltage as well as testing of uh, uh, the equipment uh, with the I mean, uh, with the, uh, for example, testing of equipment with the uh, shedding bridge, etc. We'll be talking in this lecture. So well, let's come to the chapter number eight. Uh, that is the high voltage measurement. Where we left? Yeah, the high voltage measurements. So this is the next example. To example number 11, as you can see it here, this is about the measurement of the ages old, but uh, very widely practiced method of measurement of high test voltage with the help of sphere gaps. We have discussed in detail. With the help of sphere gaps, you can measure all the types of voltages that is AC, DC, light, uh, lighting impulse, switching impulse of different polarities. But for each type of voltage and each type of polarity, you need to have a calibrated table for the size, particular size of the sphere gap, I mean the spheres used. And uh, when for, for the particular size of the sphere gap, that the sphere dimensions and uh, the, when the dimensions of the same same sphere is being used or same sphere gap is being used, uh, varying the gap distance, what will be the breakdown voltage? You can uh, refer to that. So you, if you read this example, we have two spheres of 75 centimeter diameter, 75 centimeter of diameter, something like uh, this much big. Uh, uh, diameter and uh, uh, and uh, yeah. and if uh, obviously when you measure the upper sphere is normally given a voltage and the applied voltage which is to be measured and the lower uh, 100 millimeter in this case uh, the gap setting is 100 millimeter between the two spheres. You have to find the correct value of positive lightning, lightning impulse uh, magnitude applied when a flash takes place. And you have taken the sphere gap, 75 centimeter diameter, and set a 100 uh, uh, millimeter gap distance. You've raised the voltage till a breakdown occurs. I mean, you apply different pulses of different magnitudes till the breakdown, uh, you increase the magnitude of the voltage applied till the uh, breakdown in the gap occurs. So you, uh, at 100 millimeter, the breakdown occurs. You can immediately refer to the table for lightning impulse, uh, uh, flash over, uh, the positive polarity, yeah, positive polarity lightning impulse uh, table. And for 100 millimeter, you can know the uh, magnitude of voltage needed to, uh, uh, to, uh, to make a breakdown in the gap. But the table is uh, derived for a standard uh, value of uh, or st standard uh, or nominal uh, pressure and temperature. So that value, what you are when you are performing the experiment, the pressure may be different to the normal pressure. The temperature may also be different to the normal temperature. So basically, you have to find out the correction factor to know the exact value of uh, voltage at which the breakdown has occurred to know its exact magnitude. 
your job is to find out the exact magnitude of the voltage at which the breakdown has occurred. So you refer to the table and you determine the correction factor, you multiply the correct, uh, the uh, table uh, magnitude, I mean magnitude of the voltage is given by the table, by the correction factor and you get the correct value, okay? So basically in this question, you have to work out the correction factor. The atmospheric pressure and temperatures, uh, temperature in the laboratory at the time of measurement is 754 millimeter of Hg, 760 is the normal uh, um, atmospheric pressure. Uh, you know that the, it is lower than the uh, uh, atmospheric pressure, normal atmospheric pr pressure, uh, 754. And the temperature given is uh, for the, in the tables normally is 20 degrees centigrade. And the temperature in this case is 25 degrees centigrade. Uh, the flashover voltage for the given sphere, sphere gap from the table for uh, normal pressure uh, and temperature is 265 kV. For light, positive lightning impulse wave shape, the flashover voltage from the table is given to be 265 kV. The air density correction factor table is given as follows, as you can see it here. So you have to work out uh, the air density actually, which is uh, which determines the correction factor. So air density fa uh, factor, you have to work it out. Uh, at uh, other uh, um, pressure and temperature than the normal pressure and temperature. So you attempt that we have denoted to be delta. The air density we have denoted to be delta. And de as we can see here, one, one very important thing that the uh, 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 the uh, The effective, uh, the effective uh, it is effective air density, not reflective air density. Anyway, so the air density uh, factor, there is hardly any difference between the air density factor and the correction factor. So if you see this, observe this table, 0.8 uh, is the air density factor and 0.82. Then uh, at this, the stage comes when it is 0.95, the air density factor and 0.95 is the correction factor. And the same is further again, 1, 1, 1.05, 1.05 and 1.10 and 1.09. So the air density factor, the correction factor is almost equal to the air density factor, mind it. You determine the air density factor and um, you will get the, the uh, correction factor, multiply that correction factor to 265, you will get the exact value. So it's very simple. Okay, I'll, I'll proceed, you work it out and then see the solution. So. Uh, the air density factor uh, 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 the delta as I mentioned is is equal to um, this is here not equal to this is uh, multiplied this is p by p naught p naught is the uh, standard uh, value at which the pressure uh, at which the tables are formed uh, into 273 uh, plus T naught, that is the standard value, that is the 20 degree centigrade upon uh, 273 temperature at which the uh, actual measurements have, have been done. So as you see it here, the measurement has been done uh, at 
754 millimeter of hg 760 is the normal pressure millimeter of hg 273 plus 20 because the tables are derived for 20 uh, degree centigrade but you have you are making your measurement at uh, 25 degree centigrade so when you find out that is how you find out air density factor and it works out to be 0.975 so as you see it here for 0.95 it is the correction factor is 0.95 for one it is one for therefore for 0.975 air density factor, the correction factor would also be uh, 0.975. So 0.975, you have to multiply, multiply the uh, value obtained from the table 265 kV, the breakdown at which the breakdown occurred for a gap distance of 100 millimeter between the two spheres of 75 centimeter diameter and that gives you the value of 258.5 kV and 258.5 kV is the correct value of the voltage at which uh, uh, the breakdown would have occurred okay so, so the breakdown voltage at this uh, temperature and pressure uh, the, because you have made a breakdown you don't know how much voltage you have applied you are measuring the voltage 265 you got from the table so the actual voltage of breakdown that means actual voltage applied on the uh, sphere is 258.5 in fact this method has a constraint that you have for the measurement every time you have to make a breakdown which is not desirable uh, desirable is the continuous measurement of voltage in case of impulse it is not continuous but if you record the pulse you can interpret the actual magnitude of the voltage applied and these days instruments are there with which you can record uh, the actual impulse cali on, uh, calibrated on the screen of the oscilloscope and you can also find it out. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you may not refer uh, to the table every time. Instead, you record the um, impulse voltage on the oscilloscope screen and interpret uh, because with the help of calibration on the screen you can interpret the voltage also so this method was used for a long time but this has some limitations also about accuracy the accuracy uh, i mean inaccuracies of the order of three percent in this case but you have learned better methods that is the voltage dividers with which continuous measurement can be done with, with uh, which uh, you can record also the pulse voltage on the oscilloscope and uh, do the measurement. In this case, mm, yeah, the oscilloscopes were not used for measurement with sphere gaps, but with the help of uh, potential dividers, oscilloscopes are used and measurement is done uh, of the magnitude of the pulse voltage. So we go to the next uh, numerical yeah uh, this is uh, numerical number 12 and electrostat this is on electrostatic voltmeter and uh, the electrostatic voltmeter we have talked again in detail actually electrostatic voltmeter uh, the voltmeter is formed between the two parallel plates given the proper shape at the brims and the field produced in the center of the uh, parallel plates can be considered to be the um, uh, absolutely uniform field and accordingly the calibration and interpretation of the um, electrostatic voltmeter measurements are done. So 
an electrostatic voltmeter consists of two parallel plates, one movable and another one fixed. With 11 kV applied between the plates, it is found that the pull is, I mean it has been calculated, the pull is 10 to the uh, 10 into 10 to the power of minus 3 Newton between the two plates. The, I mean, when you apply the voltage, there is a force between the plates and that has been calculated. And the uh, on the movable plate, there will be a force. And data, you have to find out the change in uh, capacitance produced for a movement of movable plate by one millimeter. That means fixed plate remains fixed. The movable plate is moved by one millimeter. And how much uh, will be the determine the change in capacitance? Because when you change the gap distance, the capacitance found between the between the two parallel plates will be different. So by movement of one millimeter of the movable plate, how much of uh, uh, difference in capacitance will be formed between the two plates? And the diameter of the movable plate is given to be 150 millimeter, that is 15 centimeter. 15 centimeter is a very small, actually, uh, electrostatic generator. and uh, uh, it, obviously, when it is very small, it is applicable for the measurement of smaller magnitude of voltages. And mind it, the electrostatic voltmeter measures the RMS value. It does not measure the peak value of the voltage applied, and it can measure uh, RMS value of AC. It can measure also DC voltages, not certainly not the impulse voltages. You no. Know? So, uh, uh, a very small 15 centimeter diameter uh, electrostatic voltmeter. So, you try to attempt, you have to find out the capacitance formed between the two parallel plates, that is uniform field. And uh, then uh, the, you have to determine the force between the uh, plates. And then you have to, uh, when you change the uh, difference, uh, what would be the, um, when you uh, change the distance between the plate is uh, the, uh, the distance between the plates, uh, you can work it out. And then when you change the distance between the plates, uh, how much of uh, how much of difference in the capacitance formed you you need to work out so attempt and then we will give you the solution yeah so here is the solution for uh, example a the area of the plate is pi by 4, 150 into 10 to the power of minus 3, that is millimeter in meter square, you are trying to find out, it will be 17.6 into 10 to the power of minus 3 meter square, the area of the uh, plate uh, of the electrostatic voltmeter. Then the force of attraction is given F is equal to 1 by 2 epsilon naught, U RMS whole square by D square into A, the area. A is the area here. So you, uh, the force is uh, proportional to the RMS uh, value of the voltage applied, mind it. And that is why U RMS. So hence the distance between the plate uh, is given. You can say from this equation, you take D on the left side and under square. The D is 
equal to under root of epsilon naught a u u max upon 2 f is the force uh, uh, the force of attraction so that works out to be 70.7 millimeter the gap uh, sorry 30.7 millimeter 30.7 three about 3 centimeters of uh, distance between the two plates at this condition the position of movable plate changes by 1 millimeter now that is d changes from 30.7 to 29 uh, point minus 1 29.7 uh, that is d1 is equal to uh, 30.7 and let's say d2 is equal to 29.7 now for a parallel plate capacitor c is yeah you parallel plate we assume or we take it for granted that the uh, the field formed between the parallel plates is of the order of uh, is a uniform field and for uniform field uh, capacitor the capacitance is given only in the case of uniform field mind it epsilon naught into epsilon r a by d so uh, uh, the change in capacitance will be only thing changes the plates area does not change epsilon r does not change is d2 1 upon d2 minus uh, 1 upon d1 as you can see in the next uh, equation so uh, change in capacitance is equal to epsilon not into epsilon r into a into uh, 1 upon d2 minus 1 upon d1 so when you put the values here the change in capacitance works out to be 0 0.17 picofarad okay so this uh, is the situation uh, uh, this is the result 0 0.17 picofarad so we can we go to the next value of the next yeah this is a very interesting um, very interesting uh, question uh, of uh, uh, on the sharing bridge so here uh, as you can see read a sharing bridge was used to determine the last tangent sharing bridge so the main purpose is to determine the last tangent of a uh, 10 millimeter thick bakelite sheet of 50 at 50 hertz using a parallel plate uh, electrode configuration and at the, I mean, what is being tried is the parallel plate capacitor instead of air as a dielectric a solid dielectric bakelite sheet has been taken here the electrode effective area uh, of the parallel plate uh, in contact with the bakelite sheet is 250 square centimeter at balance the bridge arms are AB is equal to, uh, I'll draw the, the uh, what? So this is the CX branch. So you have taken A here and B here, AB. BC is the standard capacitor which we have designated as C2 or also written C here. This is the second branch. So BC is the second branch. Okay. And uh, uh, see, see, this is equal to 10 picofarad. Standard capacitance, capacitance is 10 picofarad. Uh, and CD uh, is the variable capacitor in parallel uh, with uh, the resi resistor, uh, which uh, the value can also be uh, uh, with the resistor. Variable capacitor C4 with a resistor uh, 
with a resistor of uh, 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 R4 of the order of 350. So this is a branch which has a resistor and a variable capacitor. So this is your CD. This is your CD and this is a res resistor branch C3. R3, this is R3 given to be 70 ohms is equal to 70 ohms and this is uh, the C4 is a variable capacitor Mm. Uh, C4 C4 uh, is equal to 100 nanofarad is given and R4 uh, this is your R4 is equal to 350 ohms R4 is given to be 350 ohms this is also a variable and here is the, is the galvanometer this is the galvanometer to give you, um, you know, the, the null and mind it here you have applied the high voltage and here you have grounded okay so this is the sharing bridge scenario. So th this you can say this is C uh, X or C1. This is C2. Uh, this is uh, R4 branch. Uh, this is R th uh, third branch. And this is the fourth one. This is uh, R3. And this is R4 branch. Yeah. Then you can proceed how to uh, determine. Determine the permittivity and loss tangent of the dielectric. At the null uh, position, uh, the permittivity and the loss tangents are determined. We have derived in the lectures and uh, you should be having in your notes or refer to the book and attempt the question. We'll go to the next. You have to stop but uh, and see the solution when you have already solved okay yeah the solution as you can see here cx uh, is uh, a, see the uh, in the question it is given the test object is formed uh, under the uh, uniform field condition with uh, solid dielectric uh, in between. So C, for uniform field, once again, Cx will work out to be epsilon naught epsilon R A by D. So Cx, uh, from the bridge, you determine R4 by R3 into C, uh, C standard. Okay, this is given here, C standard. So C, uh, the standard uh, uh, capacitor is uh, C2 or the CS, C2 or CS standard capacitor, as we mentioned, is 100 picofarad. So this has been taken here, 100 picofarad. R4 is 350 given and R3 is 70. So this works out to be, CX works out to be uh, 50 uh, picofarad. And CX, otherwise, uh, mm, uh, yeah, uh, CX works out to be uh, 50 picofarad. That that means it has been measured to be uh, correctly. You can say, and uh, 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 setting the R uh, R3 and R4 and CX from the equation for uniform field capacitance formed also works out to be 50. Uh, peak of farad okay and epsilon r is given to be uh, 2.25 uh, 
the relative permittivity. So tan delta from the bridge equation you know is omega C x R x that is omega C 4 R 4 and when you put the value of uh, uh, 2 pi f into uh, uh, the uh, yeah R, R 4 is 350 uh, so tan delta works out to be uh, 50, uh, yeah yeah, the uh, uh, minute is give, uh, given. Yeah, C4 at the balance condition is given uh, in the question that is equal to 100 nanofarad that has been put here 100, 100 nanofarad and uh, uh, R4 is given to be 350. So, so tan delta works out to be much. Okay. So you have uh, uh, actually you have not known epsilon R. You have you have been asked to determine the permittivity. So you have measured the Cx to be 50 picofarad and it is given according to this formula. So epsilon r you can find out from here. This is this epsilon r will work out to be 2.25 and tan delta is omega C4 r4. It will uh, be given to be equal to 0 0.1100 990. So you can say 1.1 into 10 to the power of minus 2. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, 11.0. Yeah. That means uh, tan delta works out to be 11 uh, into 10 to the power of minus, minus 2. Yeah, 11. Yeah. Yeah. This will be multiplied by uh, 100. So 1, 2, 11. Huh. Minus 2, correct. 11 into 10 to the power of minus 2. It's pretty high. It is coming out to be pretty high. Tan delta values come, are coming out to be pretty high. Uh, may not be very much practical value or, or the dielectric is at much loss. Okay, we go, go to the next uh, and the last question in our series. And this is uh, again on sharing bridge as you can see a uh, high voltage sharing bridge has the following arms with their component arranges a standard capacitor so c2 is equal to 100 picofarad so c2 is the loss loss free uh, capacitors are almost taken loss free what do you mean by loss free Loss free means no active power loss in the capacitors. So that is normally taken as vacuum capacitor or, or uh, SF6 gas filled capacitors. They have you know, very, 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 they have practically no real power loss. Variable resistor R3 is given the range in which it is given uh, 1 to 100 kilo amperes uh, in decade steps in the uh, step of uh, um, uh, 100 uh, kiloamperes in a decade I mean, uh, every 10 you can say it can be changed uh, then c4 is given one the range of uh, c4 is given one nanofarad to one microfarad and r4 uh, values given are uh, fixed values 
100 ohm to uh, uh, 10,000, uh, 100 ohm to 10 kilo ohms. Yeah. 100 ohm to 10, uh, 10.1 kilo ohm. 10.1 kilo. Determine the maximum and minimum value of the capacitance and tan delta that can be measured with this bridge. See, it's, it's not a very difficult question. You have to just give the value of, uh, you have to apply the uh, formula for determining the CX and you have to apply the formula for tan delta and put the range and you will get the values, okay? Yeah, here's the solution. The CX maximum uh, can be, will be given R4 maximum into CS, that is standard capacitor, divided by the minimum value of R3. So uh, that means, uh, no, it's not uh, uh, 10,000. It is the R4 value maximum is uh, 10, uh, 10.1 yeah, 10 kilo ohm. So 10.1 kilo ohm is 1. 0, 1, 0, 0. and uh, the divided by R3, the minimum value for R3 is 100 ohms. So multiplied by CS, the standard capacitor value of 100 picofarad. So that CX maximum, which can be measured, is of the order of 10.1 nanofarad. Now CX minimum for CX minimum equation. R, R4 uh, on the top, you'll have to take minimum and R3 maximum, just the values. So R4 minimum is 100 ohms and R3 maximum is uh, 100, it is 10,000. Uh, R3 uh, maximum is uh, 10 kilo ohms, so that means 10,000 ohm and multiplied by CX, 100 uh, 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 picofarad gives you one picofarad. So you can measure with the help of this sharing bridge, the capacitance of the test object varying uh, from 10.1 nanofarad to, uh, or you can say from one picofarad to 10.1 um, nanofarad. The minimum value is 1 picofarad, maximum value is 10.1 nanofarad. Similarly, you apply these limiting values for the uh, in the formula for tan delta. So, so the tan delta maximum will be given uh, omega is constant, 2 pi f, and R4 and C4 the maximum values are to be given. So the maximum values when you put is, that is uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0 is R4 maximum value and the C4 maximum value is 1 microfarad as given uh, to you in the question. C4 varies from 1 nanofarad to 1 microfarad and that works out to be the tan delta value uh, of the order of uh, 3.173 uh, uh, yeah 3.1 yeah that is the maximum yeah I think this is wrong here yeah, this is uh, this this should come here. This is not right. Now we get an delta minimum. 
it should be minimum yeah. so the maximum value uh, value which can be measured is 3.17 similarly you can find out the ta minimum value of uh, uh, ta tan delta which can be measured by putting uh, the minimum values of R4 and C4, and that works out to be 0 0.0134 into 10 to the power of minus 3. It's a very, very small value of uh, tan delta. Uh, whereas 3.173 is a very large value of tan delta. So with the, uh, this, uh, these numericals, you try, um, there are other numericals given in the book. You try other numericals also. The unsolved uh, examples. There are more solved examples. There are many unsolved examples. You should attempt uh, these uh, numericals. And uh, I hope uh, you will be able to do well in the exam. So thanking you very much. And uh, this is, uh, you have uh, seen it number of times. These are our three books. So I would recommend you to refer our latest book of 2019, published in 2019, which, which, ha which has been followed mainly in this particular uh, series of lectures. So thanking you very much and all the best for learning in your life. And I hope you have learned something in a different way. The whole approach to the subject uh, on high voltage engineering in our book and our methodology is completely different. And as I mentioned, this has been, uh, this is the ideal way and this has developed the knowledge of the performance behavior of the dialectics has been developed in the way I have tried to teach you in Germany over hard work of many, many people working in this field over more than a century. So all the best to you. And I hope you will make use of the knowledge gained in if required by you in practice. So bye-bye.